Okay, right. Let's start this again. So, I am I am going to talk to you about networking and why and how I've networked to get into the position that I am. Uh, because I think it's important that I record this so that I remember. So that if I ever forget why it's so important to you know just have conversations with people and not sit in silence, that I am able to come back to this and just remind myself. Right, one, what is the most, what is the single most largest benefit that's paid off from networking? I've got a great story about this one. It is, I was, I was actually with my dad and he was going to a networking event. Didn't know where it was. I'd met him up in the city. I was running around doing other things. He was like, you should come to this. Looks interesting. It's a bit like crypto focused potentially. It's blockchain, well, actually it was blockchain focused. And I have this great line, which is I met a guy in a basement in Shoreditch. And typically that sounds like the, the start of a really, really bad story or a really, really bad ending uh, for me, not for anyone else. And it's probably blossomed into the most fruitful relationship that I have out of everything. Uh, hopefully I can, I can I get him on here one day and, and actually have a dialogue with him and that'll be great. So went to this event, it was in a, it was in a coffee cafe after hours, I think it's like six o'clock. Uh, there was about, yeah five guys and one lady around the table um, in this like dingy basement and it was it was kind of like a meetup. I can't remember the exact name but it was a lot of fun and stayed in touch with some of the people I've still got them on LinkedIn uh, some of them are off doing great things I've lost contact with the others and it was it was weird to be honest with you to begin with because I was like why am I here like what what am I what am I what am I doing? <laughs> like I'm just making stuff up as I'm going along. And it was it was just about being in the room. And it was just about engaging in a conversation and kind of giving my opinion on things more than anything else. Uh, someone was talking about FMCGs and how they can use the you know blockchain technology and why it's beneficial in their marketing. For me, I said, this is my take given that I used to work at an FMCG. That was pretty cool. And this relationship that I've, I've grown, this business relationship that I've grown with some of the people in that network has paid off in some respects that now I'm able to ask for, for warm intros to people if they know them or you know, guests on a podcast that, that we're building, in the, in the process of building. So, the most important thing when I reflect on that is I just needed to have a conversation. I needed to be in the conversation and not sit there in silence because you, well, I find myself typically really easy to sit in silence with anyone. You just sit there and you can just plod along and do your own thing. But when you're in a situation like that, it's not that you've got to force yourself upon other people. It's just, you know, you want to make, you want to make your voice heard. It's like when you're at school and, or actually it's probably better if, like you're in a university lecture and, or a seminar and, and the lecturer or seminar leader asks the, the class a question. You don't want to be the guy that puts their hand up. You kind of have to put that all to a side and just say your opinion because your opinion can matter more than anything else. And to be honest, it's just an opinion. It can change. It's not the end of the world. Right. That is, that is probably the greatest relationship that I have out of that. I've got a great story that I'll probably say for another time um, about I got a phone call and someone asked me to buy their business. Great. Brilliant. It's, it's, it's two months into doing this. It was the most hilarious thing I could ever think of. So there was that. What else do I think is important about networking is it's not about a business transaction. When you go to networking events, 
it's good because you get a large hit rate of people that you wouldn't typically be able to get anywhere else, i.e. you can have a face-to-face -face conversation with them and they can't walk away because it would just be rude. So going to those events are great, right? You go to the conferences, you go to the meetups. Uh, but the problem that I find is I, everyone is there for superficial reasons. Very rarely do you go to these events and people are interested in the event itself. So my kind of, my North Star for events now is, do I find it interesting? And would I go and do this in my own time? Because those typically are the ones where you have the greatest, where you build the greatest relationships uh, more than anything. So I would, when thinking about going to events, I would do that. Or if you just want to go for a, for a drink and a coffee and some food, they're, they're also quite, quite great for that. And people in the UK seem to love it. Like they just turn up with their mates and, and do it. You, I've, I've seen it. I know it. And that, and that sucks because you're there trying to do your thing and, you know, trying to mingle and net, net, network in itself. But half of networking is actually getting to know the person that you're talking to. And people forget, I forget, or I have forgotten in the past, just the humanity of it. Dude, you're just having a conversation more than anything else. It's just that. So I, when I think about it all now, just engage in a relationship as if you were meeting a stranger on the tube. Typically, we're quite nice. And we talk to them. Or, you know, if they ask a question or a stranger asking for directions, we talk to them. We give them, we give them a, a way of doing things and then we comment and maybe have a short conversation about X, Y, Z. I approach meeting new people in a, when in a business mindset like that now. What's weird is that that never switches off for me now. I'm always drawing lines and parallels between people. So I, I'm always trying to connect the dots. Just part of the way the brain works. Uh, my brain works, I think. Um, I'm always trying to, trying to figure out, you know, who can be, in, who, who and who can, can do something together or, you know, X, Y, Z. Right. It's important not to forget the people. Right? When you're just talking to another human being and you're not just having a transaction and not everyone is there for the right reasons and that's okay it's okay you you just have to remember that and it's it's it can be really disheartening when you are when you forget people are going to be people people are in their own worlds they're doing their own thing they've got their own motives they've got their own uh, purposes for doing things so just just remember that thirdly when you meet someone and you can see that there is some sort of relationship that could blossom. One, always take their number, like without a doubt. It's the easiest way to contact them. Two, get an email straight out the box, like after the conversation's ended. Um, and three, get a LinkedIn. Get a LinkedIn and send a message. That is one of the few things I forget to do. You just add and you're like, oh, I forgot the context of the situation. If you can there and then give a, send a message contextually, it reminds you to go back and follow up with that person. And like, this is super gorilla type, gorilla type networking. And it's not for anyone else's benefit but yourself. And to be honest, that's all you really need. You need an email, you need a name, you need a number, and you need a LinkedIn. It's the best three ways to contact someone. Um, find some common ground with them. So I know that when I started going to these large scale events, you just meet too many people that you forget. So you add them in LinkedIn and then you forget who you've added because you know they don't accept you straight away. Uh, people typically just just leave you in their in their in their connection inbox just waiting. Uh, at least that's what I found when going to large events. And by sending a message, you, you, you instantly have an opportunity to send another one and say, it was great meeting you. Um, would love to talk about or have a longer discussion around uh, our conversation at X event. You know, that's, that's a pretty good one. Um, 
how do you get people to come and talk to you unless you have a stand at a networking event? You don't. It doesn't work. Uh, you are not the coolest kid in the room. They want to always talk to brands and big dogs. They don't want to talk to agency owners um, in, in that capacity a lot of the time. So you're always trying to have to wrangle your way in or vendors wrangle your way in. What I would suggest, going back and thinking up and looking up who's going and highlight like a lot of the apps do it now a lot of the events do it now you can see who's going beforehand they put you all in an app finding the finding those people and if by chance you get to meet them great if you can set up a meet beforehand great there is there's like there's an intention there of of meeting so uh, yeah i think that is that is that is really great and to wrap it all up, that's just be human, be yourself. You are quirky and funny in your own ways. Sometimes people put on an act uh, because they think they've got to for work. I know that for me, I'm learning to drop it and try and find that middle ground of be myself. But obviously you've got different modes. And I really find that just connecting with that person as a human being, their likes, their dislikes, what, how, how they find you know, the world is a better start to a business relationship than going in cold when you're meeting someone in person and quote unquote networking. That is by far one of the best takeaways that I've got because you can find common ground. That's it. And having a camera at an event like that does help. People come up and ask and talk to you. So if you wanna, if you wanna um, peacock your way into it, get a big tripod or for your iPhone or, uh, or a camera and vlog the thing and people end up coming up to you. That's pretty much standard in every environment. They're always gonna ask like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? So it's a good conversation starter. Oh, hey, I do this. Oh, hey, I do that. And yeah, I would, I would take those away and remember to do that. Do I like going to the events? No. Do I want to go to them? No. Do I find myself having to go to them? Yes. There's a, there's a UK India one coming up in a couple of weeks. I will probably likely go to that because I think it's at the House of Commons. Well, House of Lords, one of the two. So it's always interesting meeting those people, uh, seeing the individuals that rock up to those, uh, closer knit, to have more of a conversation, get some good views. Uh, but never once has anything materialized outside of meeting the guy in the basement in Shoreditch. Food for thought. It's a work in progress. It is a work in progress. That's all I have to say. All I have to say. All right, we're done for today. See you later. I will, yeah, I'll see you later.